Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on security enhancement techniques. Today we're going to be talking about network security enhancement techniques, and then we're going to have a brief discussion on detection controls versus prevention controls. There's a fair amount of information to go over. We don't have a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and dive into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about network security enhancement techniques. If properly set up and reviewed, log files are an effective tool in helping to ensure the security of any networked system. Log files tend to generate a lot of information. Unfortunately, all too often, they are not reviewed until after a security incident has occurred. By carefully establishing the parameters that will be logged and properly training personnel on how to review the logs, security can be enhanced. Even if an incident does occur, there's a greater possibility of it being discovered earlier if log files are reviewed on a regular basis. The earlier an incident is discovered, the easier it will be for the response team to contain the damage. So let's talk about reviewing system logs. What are the logs that you should be paying attention to? The first one is the event log. It records system events that usually require user interaction. The event log is a good way to find out when users are accessing the system and which systems they are accessing. Audit logs should also be reviewed. They're a summary log of other log files that has been configured by an administrator to record and report on significant events. Security log files also need consistent review. These record security events that have occurred on the system. And finally, there are access logs. Most network devices can log who has accessed the system and when that access occurred. A good security enhancement technique is hardening individual systems. Security personnel should strive to harden all systems against attacks. This can be done by disabling all unnecessary services, disabling unnecessary user accounts, protect management interfaces and applications from unwanted access, and using password protection on all critical systems. Employing network security measures is another enhancement technique. Security personnel should strive to harden all networks against attacks. Some of the ways that this can be achieved is through the implementation of MAC filtering. This should be done on all switch and router interfaces. Limit what devices can connect to switches and routers. Disabling all unused switch and router interfaces is another recommended technique. Whenever possible, use strong authentication protocols, as in whenever possible, use the 102.1x protocol. Another method to harden the network is to conduct periodic site surveys, both wireless and wired. This is to detect and remove rogue or non-authorized systems from your network. This should be done on a regular basis. Establish a strong security posture. An initial baseline of the security configuration must be created and reviewed on a regular basis. All systems brought online must meet or exceed the initial security baseline. Continuous security monitoring should be conducted to ensure that all systems continue to meet or exceed the baselines that have been established. As new vulnerabilities become known, they must be removed or remediated, and the security baseline needs to be updated at that point in time. It is now time for our discussion on detection controls versus prevention controls. Along with log files, there are other reporting methods that can be used to enhance the security of both a network and a facility. Alarms should be placed on all access points to critical areas of the facility, including unmanned fire exits, server rooms, and network equipment rooms. Alerts should be enabled on all networking equipment and applications that report access, both authorized and unauthorized, and those reports need to go to the appropriate administrators. 
When reviewing monitoring logs, security personnel should create graphs that show activity. These graphs can be used to establish current trends in use, access, security events, etc. These trend graphs make it easier to spot anomalous activities. The Intrusion Detection System versus the Intrusion Prevention System. That is, the IDS versus the IPS. An IDS is a passive system that is designed to detect unauthorized system intrusions or attacks on a system. It is configured to only notify administrators when an event occurs. An IPS is an active system that is designed to detect unauthorized system intrusions or attacks on a system. It is configured to take specific action upon detection of an event and the intrusion prevention system will notify administrators when an event occurs. Cameras are a passive system that can be used to detect when an intrusion or security incident has occurred at a facility. Guards are an active system that can be used to detect and respond to an intrusion or security incident at a facility. If the security requirements are great enough, cameras and guards make a good combination. That concludes this session on security enhancement techniques. I began by talking about network security enhancement techniques, and then I concluded with a brief discussion on detection controls versus prevention controls. On behalf of PACE IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.